Welcome to Overwatch, and welcome to another episode of Coaching the Many. This time, I'm going to be talking about Reinhardt. I think I think I talked about Reinhardt not that long ago, but talking more about Reinhardt never hurts. He's a very important hero in the game. He is one of the most important heroes in the game. If you want to learn him, uh, this is a good place to start. So, this is a game that we're going to be watching. It's at Silver Elo. I think the actual rating is at like 1800. Uh, is an email, and actually, the reason why I picked this game in particular is because the email was actually quite nicely written. And the email says, uh, Hello, my name is Premier. I've been playing for four seasons and I'm having an amazing time with Overwatch. I really like Overwatch. I watch a lot of your videos on my commute and so on, so on, so on, so on. Um, felt like I knew what to do on Reinhardt until in this game, where he had a lot of problems because, as we're going to see, there's a Farah and Reaper constantly flanking their team and constantly getting into the back line, constantly killing all these people. And he it's like, what do I do? Where do I put my shield? How do I block this damage coming from a different direction? Where suddenly we've got the, you know, half of the enemy teams on the front line, half the enemy teams coming in the back or avoiding my barrier. What do I do? How do, uh, how do I deal with that? And it's like, it's a really good question of like, you've got this team that isn't doing traditional forms of damage. So how do we, you know, work around it? That kind of stuff. So. Let's get rid of Twitch chat. Bye, Twitch chat, as people post Valk walls. Goddamn Valk. Like, the thing is, the Valk walls aren't even properly lined up, so it's just like this mutant, weird mishmash of faces and eyeballs. It's kind of scary. Well, teeth and eyeballs. It's like I'm finding Yogg-Saron again. Jesus. Okay. What resource is standing around? There's glory to be won. Okay. Let's look at our team lineup. First and foremost, I like having a good look at the team lineup uh, just to begin a game. Notice one thing uh, imme immediately. One support. Solo support. Numero un. Uh, so what are you going to do with solo support? This is going to happen like every now and then. You're going to get games where it's just you don't have two supports. When you have a solo support, you've just got to keep this in mind that healing is going to be at a premium. Like You aren't going to get all the healing you could want, so finding health hacks is a little bit higher priority. If you're low, you might have to just hide away a little bit more. It's going to be a little bit slower. Otherwise, we got two, th we got three tanks, so we're fairly muty. Farah should be doing a lot of damage in the air. Farah's not actually going to be able to do as much as perhaps she's expecting, because the Mercy isn't going to be able to contribute as much, because Mercy has to focus on trying to heal the entire team. So, yeah. Uh, it's King's Row. Again, very popular map. Very standard map. Actually, like, it's worth pointing out this very early on, because there's actually something kind of interesting that happens where the Zarya's put her bubble up, so that's a good sign that, you know, especially when you see the second bubble. Um, at higher levels, you want to be a little bit careful of this. When they have a Zarya, understand that your fire strikes are probably going to get blocked by the Zarya, so it's a good source of charge for that Zarya. It's like 20 free um, charge on her damage, which is quite considerable, and if it's two people, it's 40 charge. I think that's, I think that's how much it is, because it's like 200 per barrier, and you're getting half of a barrier, which is 20. I think that's how it works anyway. Um, but in general, like this Reinhardt is actually very close to the choke. This actually gives us a bunch of options. Um, and what I like is the fact that you actually start doing what I think you should be doing here, which is you just advance up to him and then you just start smacking him in the face, especially once this hook goes through and gets rid of the Reaper. We could just start smacking him. And honestly, with this barrier, we didn't have to take this charge. This is a little bit sort of greedy by us. Because no matter what happens when we take the charge, we're going to end up sort of behind their line and a little bit tricky to support. Ideally, our team should come in and, like, kill this guy um, if he turns around and tries to deal with us, but it's still a little bit risky. With the barrier on, we could just walk forward, keep smacking this Reinhardt, and just make his life a living hell. The Reaper's down, we have a Roadhog, we have a Zarya, who should be getting a little bit more charge. We can probably win this barrier war, and we could probably win the range battle and just bully this Reinhardt down, no problem. It's unfortunate that we didn't land that, but now we've sort of run into a problem where we charged in and Anna's just grenaded us at the end point. Now we're surrounded, killed, no healing on us because we're naded, so down we go. Ideally, your team should be following up and sort of getting rid of either the Reinhardt and the Mercy on the enemy team, but hey, just, just silver things. Um... Now, I'm not expecting too much in terms of a reliable follow-up or understanding where these opportunities are in this game, it's more simple opportunistic play because now it's a little bit scary now all we're trying to do is get this area up and this is why i like this movement here this is very good just step forward cover it with the shield and then pull back what i didn't like was seeing this um where we're just standing here with like half a barrier we're not really setting up to push we're on 153 barrier that's enough reaper can one shot that from pretty much any distance why do we have our barrier up right now we should just be putting it down and just letting it recharge we're not actually protecting anything and if anyone shoots it it's gone for a short period of time so this, 
um, this is sort of what I call like overshielding. It's just it's very worth talking about this because there are rhinos that do it all the time. When you start getting sub 1,000, start looking for opportunities just to put your barrier down. Tell your team, guys, I've got to lower the barrier. Um, I need to recharge it. And the team would generally understand that, hopefully. Uh, if they don't, then they're going to just die, but that's their problem because like you cannot start a push with 153 shield. You, you might as well not be there. So, yeah. This charge is a lot better, much better angle as well, because we're charging kind of across the Reinhardt. So if you think about where we charged before, it was sort of this way, um, where we're ending deeper into their territory. Well, this time we're going more this way. So we're a little bit shallower. Like, we're a little bit more inward, so we're a little bit safer, a little bit more tucked away. It feels good, man. Land the charge, get a follow-up swing. I like the fact that we're isolating the Mercy. This Earth Shadow, um, I'm okay with it. Like, when I was watching this, I thought, yeah, I would have probably gone for this one too. Ideally, you try and get the Mercy in it. I think, like, the moment you see this, you just turn and you just drop the Earth Shadow. She's close enough to the ground where it will hit. Um, and you could probably get the Reinhardt and the Mercy, which would have been worth it on its own. We just get the Reinhardt, but honestly, it's still kind of okay, because it means that we can start brute forcing our way in. Hopefully our team will do enough damage. We get the fire out the sky. And this is part of where, like, the solo healer actually becomes a big problem. Because if we had more than one healer, if we had more supports on us, we could probably just finish this area off. This this lovely pixelated mess that is area at the moment. Uh, we could have easily just smacked her and finished her off. But because Mercy's there, we can't do it. Um, Mercy will just make our DPS sort of very marginal, so it's very difficult to get a finish. Especially on a target like area, you can self-heal. Like, when this Roadhog appears, this big friendly fat Roadhog, this is when I will be putting up the barrier. Um, whoops. Let's try and find a keyframe. Luckily, people do come in, help finish off this arrow, which is fine. This is where, honestly, we can stop chasing this. Like, we're left with pretty much, I think, an Anna and a Mercy on the point. This is where you start putting your barrier up and you just start playing it safe as the Reinhardt. You just put your barrier up, make sure that this Anna can't do anything, for example. The rest of your team should just come in and clean up the Anna and the Mercy, no problem. By doing this, what we're doing is we're sort of giving the... Uh, and an opportunity maybe to get a kill. We're giving the Mercy an opportunity to perhaps do some more healing, maybe get a res in this case. Um, we have to be very careful about sort of letting people do things. And we could just stop them doing that and just rely on our team being moderately sensible and just picking off the Anna and picking off the Mercy one at a time. Uh, let's get rid of this Reinhardt. The Zarya did a very good job by shielding us. And the Roadhog did a good job punishing that. But when I saw this come in, it's like, yeah, we just punish this. We either punish this by just stepping in this way. Because what you can do here is actually quite nice, where if we stand here, we effectively create, like, I say be the wall quite a lot when I'm talking about Reinhardt coaching. But we are literally being a wall here because we've basically created, like, if you think about Reinhardt's model, it's basically a big square. So if I draw, like, a big gelatinous cube, this is a terrible square. But you get the idea, right? Like, this is Reinhardt on the map. It's basically just added terrain for this Reinhardt to try and wheedle his way back around. Zarya can kill him. Uh, Rodor can kill him, A++++. Like, very, very good ways of just shutting stuff down. Luckily, the Rodor comes in, does the punish anyway, but we just leave our barrier up here and hope that our team comes in starts pushing. We should be flicking upwards. We can see that there's a threat coming from above, so we should be trying to block this fire because she does end up getting us. Again, solo healer, this is going to happen, where she's trying to heal too many things at once and trying to survive at the same time, and so we go down. But when there is a fire in the air, like this, there's sort of two threats at the moment. But what I would say is, the way this breaks down in my head is, okay, the Reinhardt's dead. The Zarya's on quite high charge, so he's, she is kind of a threat. But we can see the rockets coming in from above. Once this rocket hits, and especially when you see the whole hog coming in, this is when we turn and face up, because this Zarya is no longer going to be able to do any reliable damage on us. Because um, if you think about what Zarya's seeing right now, it's like, boo, as she's being launched all over the place. She's not doing anything. So we can block this fire as rocket and then maybe try and stay alive a little bit longer. It shouldn't matter too much. Our team should be taking the point right now. It's just a fire left, I think. Should be no problem. This is where pressing the escape would be nice because we don't really need to see that, oh, Farah dunked us. Um, just keeping an eye on what the team's doing would be nice. Like, I'm okay with watching the occasional kill cam, especially if you're sort of learning, but... After a while, you should probably just not use them. This is a desperate, desperate Graviton by those area. This is like a blessing for your team. It's like, Mercies are down on both sides. They need some huge ultimate combo. And I don't think they quite have it. And then Soldier just like returns the favor. It's like, oh, I'll, I'll throw away my ultimate. I'll, I'll make it even, guys. Don't worry. Uh, this is, this was unsurprising for me to see. This is, I think, 
Like, one of the common things you'll see at lower elos is people just not considering other people's ultimates. Quite as much, it's just quite funny to me. Um, because in a higher level game, people will be shouting at Soldier. Why the hell did you do that? You didn't need to. Because it's Farah plus Zarya is more than enough. And especially with the Reinhardt charge going through, it was no no need to use Attack Visor. Much better to have that available. Uh, okay. This is where we start having problems. Like, spoiler alert, problems are going to start happening, especially around the pub area coming up. Um, yeah, this is where Farah actually starts to become a real problem for Reinhardt. And she's a huge pest. The way that I try and deal with this is I break it down in my head of like, okay, how much DPS is coming from this angle? How much DPS is coming from this angle? Like, if we think about it in terms of... Um, you don't even need to really need to have the clear picture. Like, let's make red Farah. So Farah is going to be coming in from above, right? We can only really do so much about that. If we angle the shield up, we can block it, but then damage can come in from the front a lot easier. So we have to be a bit careful. Um, damage coming in from sort of the main pathway, though, if we use gold for that, or I guess yellow, more conventionally. We've got, like, the Reinhardt, we've got the Reaper, we've got Zarya. And right now, I think the biggest thing in my mind is the fact that they have a Reinhardt as well, who could potentially have Earth Shatter. So if we angle our shield up and he has Earth Shatter available, we just lose. Because he Earth Shatters, our entire team gets knocked down, and then Farah can start killing us off. So honestly, the Farah isn't so much a problem. Um, that's more for sort of Zarya to try and block the damage from, and try and catch that damage using her shields, and that kind of thing. The one thing I will also comment on, because our barrier just went down, is like this time between points is a good moment for us to rest our shield a little bit. Like we're on 2000 barrier, we can drop it here, we can start pushing forward. As rockets start coming in, like don't be afraid to just put down your barrier at this distance. If Farah shoots a rocket, you have more than enough time to see it coming, react to put your barrier up, and block the shot. If you even need to. Like, there's no need for us to have a barrier here, she's not shot at it yet, now we can put it back up. And we could just be saving little bits of barrier. Like, we're just gaining this ground for free, so we should be trying to get back to 2,000 as we start advancing towards this corner. And just hugging this wall as people hug the payload, recharge to 2,000, and then start the fight with a fresh new barrier. A barrier is not really going to be lasting too long in these fights, so we do have to be very careful about how much we lose on the way in. Because Reaper, Farah, Zarya, Reinhardt is actually a really good combo for destroying barriers. Oh, you notice now we're kind of stuck. And then this happens, where their Reinhardt just gets like a, a little good advantage. This is a good eyeshadow. Unfortunately, their Farah comes in with a good barrage. And gets two off the back of it. And yeah. Farah. Farah doing her job. Like, this is what happens when a Farah sort of is working without check. And I noticed um, when watching this game that the Farah is gold rank. And I think the average rank in this game is 1800. So the Farah might be a little bit of a higher rank. She definitely was a huge influence on the enemy team doing so well. I don't mind this Earth Shatter. I think this is like making the best of a bad situation. You conceivably could have won this fight. This is when, for example, um, Infrasight. Not Infrasight. What am I talking about? Uh, tactical Visor. I always get my visors mixed up. Uh, there's too many damn visors in this game. Yeah, Tactical Visor would have been wonderful. Like, Tac Visor, you kill the Farah, you then follow in the Earth Shatter, you kill absolutely everything, Soldier kills everyone, you win the game. But, you used it earlier. Ha! <laughs> You know, it's, it feels bad, man. Um, it, it, like, little things, little optimizations. Make all the difference in the world. Now, this is where it starts getting tricky because we're starting to advance long distance. This is where bunny hopping is useful. And I actually like the fact that, like, Reaper's here because it actually makes it very easy for us because we should just be now isolating the tree. But, like, I like the fact that we just sort of wrapped around him and just made it <laughs> difficult for him to do anything. He runs away. Okay. Now that Reaper's run away, we actually have a little bit of a breather, so we should be trying to use that. But our barrier is just not lasting. Again, part of that is, honestly, we could have just conceivably, when we get to about... when the, Especially when the Zarya bubble comes on, use that as an excuse to just drop your barrier. Like, you, you are big enough with the bubble to absorb some damage coming in. It's a good opportunity for you to just put down the barrier for a couple of seconds, maybe get a little bit of recharge on it, and then you can start pushing in. Because this is all hit points for your team. Like, this is all damage blocked. It's all damage not hurting people. So it's very, very useful in that way. And especially when you're in situations like we were, like, literally a couple of frames ago. So I'm just going to go back frame by frame. Um, like, in a situation around here, where it's, you've got, like, the Reinhardt there, the Anna there, most of their team is just tucked around. If you start pulling in around here... Um, actually, let's use a different color for that. Let's see, Eraser. Woo! There we go. So if we just pull in over here and our team does the same, nothing can really threaten us. So we have an opportunity then to lower our barrier and just put it down. 
and we don't have to worry about keeping this up. So that means we can start forcing around the corner where things are actually being contested at full charge, um, which will make a big difference. Like it's a 1,500 extra hit points. Because once it starts going down, then we're open to stuff like sleep darts, we're open to more and more stuff coming in. This was a greedy charge and this was sort of unprepared, I think. Like, well, ah, okay, no, I see what happens. Just, I get what we were going for, but I still think this was overly risky, maybe. I would have liked to just probably walk forward and just try and smash the Reinhardt a bit. It's a bit of a shame that the fire rocket knocks us to the left, because it would have probably connected and it wouldn't have been too bad a charge, but... Hmm. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing that does make me sad is the fact that Reinhardt is, uh, the fact that you can't toggle which direction Reinhardt swings his hammer in from, because the hammer has like a pulling effect when you hit, and Reinhardt is, he swings this way. Uh, I don't know if that actually translates well on the webcam. He swings this way. So if we walked forward and swung, we would have pulled their Reinhardt into their team instead of pulling, if we could like right click and pull a different direction you could pull him out of his team. That would actually be a really nice little thing that Blizzard could put in so that you could have a bit more control over which way you're moving people around. Because you notice when we swing, the first swing goes right. You can actually use that if you left click once and then you just keep tapping left click. If you want to keep pulling people to the right, just keep tapping left click and you'll just keep pulling them that way. It's actually a nice little trick. Very small trick, but a nice little one. Otherwise, you just do what we're doing now and hold down left mouse button. Uh, past a certain point though, we should be stopping this holding down left mouse button, and I think it's about- I think it's about when the heal grenade goes on to the Reinhardt. So it's looking good, it's looking good, we're building a lot of ult charge. And then the heal grenade goes on him, and it's like, hmm. What we can do now though is actually quite cunning. Uh, a nice thing we could do is we could stand here with our barrier up here. Uh, just like in front of the payload, and we block any healing going onto that Reinhardt. That means the rest of our team could hopefully deal with that Reinhardt and just kill him, because the Ana can't stop- the Ana can't heal him anymore. And they will actually get him sort of in better time. Now that we have our Shadow ready, this would have been such a good opportunity to have Shadow, but ugh. Like, I remember when I was watching this, I was like, oh god, that would have been such a good Shadow, and then this happened, it's like, oh, god, no, they've already gone. And this is where the problems start coming in, or where the Reaper starts really becoming a problem, the Farah. You notice that, like, the Farah and Reaper are just in the back killing stuff. This is partially, um, Roadhog not really doing as much as he could as well. Like, he's helping you push forward, but you don't need that help pushing forward. It should be Zarya and it should be Zarya and Roadhog dealing with this threat in the back. And this is kind of the thing I wanted to emphasize, was it just felt like a bad division of labor. Like, this is where the team needed to sort of have someone just tell them how to deal with this, basically. Because you got the two threats in the back, and honestly, like, we don't need Roadhog and Zarya both here. You could just tell Roadhog, Roadhog, just go back, protect the healers, Reaper's back in the back. If he lands the hook on the Reaper, Reaper's done for. Uh, especially if you've got a Mercy without to damage amp, you've got some form of damage to sort of just kill stuff. I'm fine with the search shadow, by the way, it's a little bit of a shame we don't get the Reinhardt, and perfectly okay with the charge as well. Uh, getting rid of the Mercy, who potentially has a res, is huge, and the fact that, you know, the Reaper and Faro are just getting away with murder right now isn't really our fault. And that's sort of the one thing I wanted to emphasize, was this didn't feel like it was your fault in this. I did not like that Graviton Surge from the Zarya, at all. Um, if you got everyone, it might have been worth, but like most of the team is already dead, and Reaper just Rayforms out. We get the Reinhardt, who's already dying anyway, it's just like, unnecessary. People in chat calling out the fire for getting killed by the Reaper. Uh, yes, it's also shouldn't things that shouldn't happen, basically. But the team has actually swapped. The fire has now gone off onto the McCree, so you think, hey, that will help deal with it. We've got double hit scam, got a stun. Actually, let me have a look at uh, our team lineup. There we go. Uh, you know, we've got a stun, we've got a hit scam, we've got tanks. Surely, surely we shouldn't have a problem. Okay, well, we have a soldier and a... Oh wait, Soldier's overextending got nailed by the Farah. McCree's like running forward to try and deal with something that doesn't really need dealing with. And this is where, like... And again, this, honestly, I would not say is your fault. You are Reinhardt. And this, this death is just a good combo by them. You are Reinhardt. Your job is to protect from forward-facing damage. Your job is to protect from stuff like their Reinhardt doing things, to protect from major sources of damage output, and sure, if you're in position, and I think like the one criticism I'd levy is that maybe we advance a bit too far forward ahead of our team, 
Like we just weren't careful and we just sort of started really overextending, but like the soldiers are overextending over here, um, the McCree's are overextending on us. It's not great. And thank you to Bundy O. Bundy Zero. Let's go with Bundy Zero. I know Bundy O sounds better, but I like being obtuse and naming like numbers properly. So Bundy Zero. Um, we're a little bit too far forward and like the soldiers also just gone a bit crazy. Um, and just tried to solo the fire when he could have just st stood behind you. The team just clusters up a little bit. You're less vulnerable to these flanks and it all goes a bit better. And so to address the concern of like, yeah, what do I do in this situation? This is where, as a Reinhardt, it's just kind of like, aha. Uh -huh. And stuff like turning around, like when the team's more tucked in, you notice how you could just turn around and block some of these Reaper shots going onto the Roadhog? That's the advantage of being a little bit more tucked in. That's the advantage of being a little bit sort of tighter as a team. And therefore, you can quickly like swing your shield around if a Reaper suddenly comes in guns blazing. The one scary thing is that they have a Reinhardt who... I don't think we saw him out of Shadow recently, though it's always a little bit... Ugh. And now we're really scared, right? Because we've got 40 seconds left. We're talking into you, I actually haven't listened to what we're saying. Fire at will! Justice reigns from a double kill! They will not give up the fight! Flying above us, Like I said, Soldier and McCree are like fair as counters. I'm trying. Okay, I have ult. I just switched to McCree, so. Okay, okay so it's just like. I like it. Uh, the way the way that you actually get around this in a diplomatic way, so what was basically being said, if you couldn't quite hear it, because it might not be quite as clear going over the stream, or it might not be as clear in the VOD, is, you know, the fire is just raining supreme from above, Soldier and McCree should be able to handle it, and I think the McCree's just said, you know, I've just swapped to McCree, get off my case, or something like that, so he's obviously feeling a little bit pressured, and all you say is as the Reinhardt here, is you, you grab the team by the reins a little bit and you say, okay guys, stay close to me, stay close behind my barrier. Uh, McCree and Soldier, just focus on the Farah, call out where you see her, and call out when you see the, uh, the Reaper, and then just kill them. And if that happens, then it feels good. This is a little bit forced, but we can bunny hop our way forward here. This will be another good opportunity to bunny hop. This is not a good opportunity to charge though. And the reason why, like, I understand why you went for it, thinking that, you know, we're going to free stuff up here. It's honestly more on like the soldier just fucking up here. I would have advanced a lot further forward. The Zarya did a really good job um, putting a bubble on you. So at least, like, if our shadow goes off, then we're not going to get stunned by it. We could just get the full charge. But there's just a lot of risks associated with that. We should just be trying to advance forward. We do manage to get the soldier free, but soldier just sort of jumped the gun there. Like, and if someone does something a little bit silly... Protect him through it, but you can't do too much. This decision, I don't like. I get why we went for the Mercy, and it might still be enough um, to turn the fight. Although the fire then just starts slamming everyone. I like the fact that we're staying in the heal field and just blocking damage. This is good. Then the Reaper, you did not need to charge here. And I'll talk about the Earth Shadow in a second. Let's finish this fight first. You did not need to charge there. Uh, you could have just waited for your team to come back. You could have just waited. Oh, you could have just waited for your team to deal with him. Like, we don't need to charge this. It's it's risky. It potentially gives the Reaper a kill. It's putting us in a bad position. It, it feels bad, man. Like, we don't, we don't need to do that. We could just stay in front of our team. Be nice and safe. We still have a good 900 barrier. So let's talk about this uh, shadow here. I understand going for the Mercy. And it might have paid off here. The thing that occurs to me is the die, die, die in the background. When I had the first die, my instinct was, okay, let's turn and stop that. Rather than try and get on this mercy. And the reason why is you could potentially stop these two deaths if you manage to catch him fast enough, and then you would be okay. Luckily, our, um, our res comes through. I think they're... No, that is our res, yeah, good. You that it looks like Anna's golden as well, which is like, what? Wait, well, we just killed Mercy, what the fuck? Um, but just sort of stopping that damage, I don't know, my instinct was to shut that down, but I think, uh... I think you're alright going with the Mercy there. I think you're okay there. 
I'll let that one slide. It's it's more to me. It's more of a case of like, do we win the team fight super hard and then they res and then we just keep winning, or do we potentially deny the mercy res but we potentially lose the team fight as a consequence? And that's always a little bit tricky. Uh, hey, mercy, mercy, providing support in more ways than one. This is ooh. Uh, it's actually a very important idea, but when Roadhog whole hogs and they have an Anna, put a barrier up. And especially if we're on solar healing, because otherwise that happens where the Roadhog just gets slapped and taken down. We're also, we're going a little bit deep here. This charge was a bit, um, like if you think about where we're going to end this charge, we're going to end it over here. And that just means that, you know, this, this is our bomb as Reinhardt and like we got, we got our pointy head here. Okay, and let me get yellow. I have far too much fun doing this. This is us, and then we got a big hammer. Okay. Like, our bum is hanging out in the fucking breeze here. Um, and that's that's never good for us. That's never ever gonna be good for us. So, yeah, it's, it's always gonna... I'm so proud of that drawing. I'm so proud of that drawing. Um... Yeah, which, which is so vulnerable. So, just be very careful when doing charges like this it's it's extremely risky we could have just covered the roadhog and see if roadhog gets anything off the back of this whole hog i don't think he will i think he's jumped the gun a bit i think he's gone a bit um a bit silly but yeah the chat is also calling calling out it's calling out nail the reason why it's calling out nail is because ages ago we did coaching the many the reinhardt that just kept charging into stuff and he was nail kick his ass and so we're being a bit of a nail Kick their ass. But if you were trained in the new way, you might have stood a chance. And yeah. We get our arm ripped off about 30 times by Freezer and down we go. And so ends the saga of the Reinhardt here. Um, okay, let's let's go forward. Arkathor, thank you for the three months. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay, let's go. But still, we've got one minute. Our team is pushing. Hopefully the team will do something sensible and stop by this corner instead of trying to push it out of Reinhardt. <laughs> will they fuck? No. And now we're in a really awkward situation. Try and get this Zarya out is all I could say, but don't go into this. Don't go into this. For the love of God, don't go into this. This is death. No, back up. Back away. No, Zarya. Zarya, why? Oh, Jesus, no. It's all gone wrong, ladies and gents. I admit, I actually stopped. I haven't watched much further than this, so I didn't see that graviton. I was just like, holy shit! No! Okay, guys. Um, when there is one minute left on the clock, you've got to be very conservative with your ultimates. And I know the instinct is there. I've done it myself so many times. So, so many times. Especially with Graviton Surge. If you are playing Zarya and like their entire team is mobbing on you, but everyone is dead, don't think, well, I'm going to get a six-man grab and then die and then... Like, this, this happens so many times to sort of inexperienced Zarya's. It's just not worth it. And I, I'm, I could see, I could see the debate. Like, there's a, like, let me, let me uh, red. Okay, let me try and get this about right. I'm like literally using my OBS preview, so on my shoulder here, pitchfork, head. I'm literally using my Welcome OBS preview to, to try and draw silly. this. Okay, there's a devil here, and then like there's there's mercy over here, who has wings. These are really pretty wings. And a halo. Okay, so there's a devil and an angel on my shoulder. Also, thank you. Oh, God. I need, is that a new sub as well? Ooh, ooh, new subs. Uh, just has just subscribed. Welcome aboard. Welcome to the many, Just. Um, so, yeah, I've got a devil and a, an angel on my shoulder. And the devil's going, charge them. Charge them now. You can kill them all. And the, the, the mercy's going, no, you fucking idiot. You're just going to die. And then you're going to be dead for 30 seconds. The team can't push and we instantly lose. And the devil's going, but the Zarya, she threw the Graviton so you could get play of the game. The danger's going, play of the game doesn't fucking matter, you idiot. Just, just don't do it. Clearly, my idea of angels are very, very, I don't know, passive, well, not even passive aggressive, just aggressive aggressive, I guess. Uh, okay, we do the right thing. We don't charge. We should honestly be backing away. We shouldn't even be stood this close. Because all we're doing right now is taking damage while our team is still trying to get into position. 
and stuff like this can then happen. <laughs> I admire your approach here. <laughs> that was actually value. That actually worked out. Oh no! Oh god, no! Oh, that's such a tragedy though. This is bold. Uh, we have a solo healer, so we only have one source of healing. Um, trying to engage a, a Roadhog at close range is usually a death sentence. We're kind of lucky. I think that the Roadhog didn't do more damage than he did in this shot. He only did like 150. Only 150 damage, ladies, ladies and gents. We get the charge, but once the healing goes on him, we're never going to get him. But it does bait out the mercy. Our Shatter is good! Their Reinhardt's reaction is better. Very close. But, I would say, the mistake here happened far earlier. We made a good attempt of trying to save it, but the mistake is being this far forward. Where we should be a lot further back and just helping our team come in. And then we could start pushing down this barrier. If we just tell the team, I'll have our shadow soon, let's get their barrier down. I our shadow, we win. That could work, for example. You'd be surprised how much it helps to give a simple little bits of guidance to your team. Saying things like, yeah, our shadow's gonna be ready. Uh, next fight. So if we win the barrier war, if we get their barrier, then I just uh, shadow them and we win. And then the team just, you know, has a simple objective of kill the enemy Reinhardt barrier. Very good reaction by there, Reinhardt, though. He saw the hammer down and charged into, basically, he knew what you were going for and countered. You charge out of it, charge out of it. Good block, you've got to charge out of it to get on the point. But barrage, too much. Their combos, like, the reason why their team is winning is their combos are so much better. Like, their far is really doing a good job, but, like, they are just getting huge value every single time. It's such a shame that that res goes out there. I mean, it's, like, it keeps the Mercy alive during it, I guess, and she can run out of the Graviton when in res and vulnerability as well, but... The fact that, like, that hit over time was just, ugh. Uh, yeah, I know, I noticed the Roadhog went Junkrat, and it's not a particularly useful pick in my mind here. We're getting killed by Farah and Reaper. I'm, g I'm going to go Junkrat. But hey, but Junkrat at that elo can work. I just, I don't think a Junkrat at like the very last minute is going to make much more of an impact than the Roadhog potentially could. Uh, I think the Roadhog's going to 